Everyone watching the show, do you be yourself and make sure that you love being yourself. And it's going to be roadblocks, it's going to be tribulations, but always remember this is a life experience. Accept the experience, appreciate the experience, and learn how to move on from things that don't serve you well. You know, and find your journey, respect your journey, and love it. In my community, I'm 31, so I'm a leader now. I got young homies that grew up looking at me. All my moves, they seen it. You know what I mean? They seen me at six, seven years old. They was looking out their window. We was outside. They came outside when they was 10, 11. They remember everything. So they got the most profound understanding of the transition. These dudes are chefs. They still bangers. But are oh, you been having a passion to cook this whole time? Damn, that's crazy. Niggas would have never known. But, oh, I rap. It used to be held against me that I rap. I used to have to fight more than niggas because I rap. You feel me? I used to have to react with more vicious because I rap. It was like a mark against my manhood at a time. Like I ain't, I ain't, I ain't a full time banger because I go to the studio. That pressure stopped a lot of people from pursuing their passions. So by, you know, I went through a lot for that. You feel me? I went through extra fights, all type of shit, just because I wasn't gonna let niggas scare me out of my passion. I read somewhere that the highest human act is to inspire. And we all are in search of inspiration every day. We all have the capacity to inspire people, to be able to either inspire or be inspired, I think is what creates movements, you know? You have to know even if don't nobody else say you are, you have to know that you are a vessel, you know, and you receive and you transmit, you know. So don't let nobody degrade you, you know, about who you are. You have to know. So you got to really pay attention to things around you and things that come through you because you never know how the one is using you. I didn't know at that time what was going on, but I paid close attention because I knew I was a vessel. All right, so what's up, YouTube? It's the Night Saint here, back with another video. And this video is gonna be about embracing your story. Embracing your story. Uh, you have to realize that every single person, every single being on the planet literally is an aspect of the universal collective consciousness, right? With unique stories, unique backgrounds, unique blood, unique DNA, unique environments. How about I say, at the end of the day, I realized that no matter what type of background you come from, to a certain extent, we are all the same. We all still have the same backgrounds. We still have, the, not the same background, but same uh, system. We all have the same type of life structure that can really be, there's a parallel between everybody that lives on the planet. Everybody has a gift. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody, you know, exist at this moment in time and there won't be anybody like us exactly exactly how we are ever again even though it's been millions and millions it's probably been billions and billions of people on the planet before but nobody has ever been like us and i think that's kind of i think that's bizarre do i believe it to be true all the way not all the way i believe it's somebody has been like me of course not with the name kevin downer but i think that spirits have like archetypes especially like positive and negative spirits they have archetypes and then it's a group of people that's like this they always been on this planet they always gonna be on this planet and and that goes you know for the same for the negative type of spirits but i think that's where i believe that to be true at and i believe that not embracing your story is like a form of self-hatred right i believe that not well embracing your story is like a uh uh form of like self-respect and like self-love and one thing i have to understand for myself is that embracing your story it inspires other people to embrace theirs i think with society or even just on social media it's like everybody's so caught up with trying to be like you know let's say I, let me just speak for like the male aspect i know males be trying to act like you know some want to act tough some want to act gangster i know black boys even me i feel i feel trapped to that to a certain extent even though that was never me i wasn't 
like in the streets or nothing, but I wanted to at least look a more uh, tough because it's the idea of the masculine principle. Like I said, you just want to look more tough, and really that has nothing to do with it. But well, it doesn't have nothing to do with it all the way, but it's like a small, very small percentage of what it really means. But even me, I fell victim to it. I wanted to be more, I want to perceive, want to be perceived more as tough. And the crazy thing is, I'm not saying I'm sensitive or soft or nothing, but I'm just, I mean, I am sensitive. I'm not saying I'm soft, but I was always, I was never that type of person. I was in the house all day. I was chilling. I was sitting and watching anime, drawing. I'm getting into poetry, nah, shit. But I about to say that was just that's me now. But I was always just a kid that was into superhero. I was a I was I was a geek when I was a kid. I ain't gonna lie. And I about to say I got older, and I started working the job, and I started worrying about girls and shit. And I just like all that all that geek shit went out the window. Like and I and I'm kind of sad that it did because I was always that was really who I was at the you know, and I still am. Like I said, I, I I'm getting back into it slowly, but that's who I was. Like I couldn't run away from that. I never wanted to intentionally. It's just you know, when you get into environments where you know you're com in a sense is competing. It's like when you were in school, it's a matrix. Of course, you're trying to. You want to be popular? I about to say I was lame. I about to say I wasn't lame. I was just—I always thought I was a loser, so that's probably the reason why. I, I, my self-esteem was shitty, so I was always like, "Damn, like I don't know nobody." Like I said, "I don't, I don't no girls talking to me either." So I am like, "What can I do to, you know, change that?" And I guess uh, putting away with my childish things was one way of doing that. But like I said, even that didn't work. I mean, of course, as I got older, and you know, the internet helped that a little bit. The internet is make everything, make everybody alike, and I and I think I like that, but I hate it at the same time. It makes people embrace everything, but now everybody's like the same person, and to a certain extent, we are. Like I said, you are a part of like the universal, you know, collective consciousness, but it makes nothing unique anymore, to a certain extent, and that's where the embracing your story is. Like some people are just some people. And some people are very eccentric and some people are very shy. Some people are very loud and that's just who they are. <laughs> and by not being who you are, you are like minimizing your light. Everybody is who they are and who they meant to be. But through societal pressures, we always shape shift and, you know, trying to fit inside this box for acceptance because, because we fear rejection. Really, I, about to, I fear rejection for my own family. And I about to say, and, and never, it was never even stated that I, you know, should feel reject or have a fear of rejection is just something that you pick up subconsciously from just, you know, micro behaviors or, you know, you just pick it up unconsciously. You don't notice you're doing it, but you are. Like, that's how kids learn to lie. It's like they don't, nobody may not lie to them, but it's just the DC emotions push you to think a certain way and in a certain way provoke these type of beliefs. Let's say as a parent or, you know, a kid stole something. Let's say, just, let's go back to your old kid self and you and you took something. You probably ate it and then you lied about it. I'm about to say you lied about it just because you didn't you didn't want to make your parents upset or you was you feared whatever they had to respond back with and then you start to feel these feelings of rejection when you know they find out the truth and then they tell them they tell you how disappointed they are, and that's just one way of just how ref, how rejections causes an individual to really start to you know, get comfortable with lying and just changing how who they are to, you know, fit a narrative or fit a or keep the peace. So yeah, so to me now, I guess since I got a little older and I matured a little bit more, I said I matured a little bit more. Uh, I realized that embracing your story, embracing who you are, is a is a way to really you know love yourself but also it shows others the blueprint to you know being themselves it it it, it gives space for people around you to really be themselves and it's like a, in a sense it's like a trickle effect when you stop trying to like kiss ass and you stop trying to you know be somebody else for people around you and so you start to be yourself raw it's like it inspires people to be themselves it inspires change. It inspires people to have some boldness some, and some courage to really live life the way that they want to live it. Like, and it's beautiful to see. Like, I, I say, I see this in everybody around me. I, I, 
of course, I try not to allow my ego to get too big because you know because you can when you're doing better with your life and when you're changing, you genuinely see how people re receive you differently. You see that the people that's around you they change. Either they get better or they get bitter. And some people they see you doing well. Like I said, it's like a. I know people be saying competition is bad. I don't believe it to be bad. I get why they say it, but if I had more friends that was close to me. I will, I'm competitive like that. Not in a bad way, but it's just, you know, I think I just got it from, like, the anime. It's like, you know, when they have a rival, you just want to get better. You just want to, and of course, it's to see who better to a certain extent, but it's not like a a hatred behind it. It's just like, I just want to, you want to be, you want to have somebody that is like a foil to you and you want to see how far y'all can take it and see how far y'all can get, you know, good. And it's like, you know, I wish I had that type of person in my life. I don't have them. I don't have them somebody like that now but hopefully i do find somebody like that that's like almost like a rival like i said it's almost like a, it's almost like an adversary but it's like a necessary one maybe it's myself and like i said maybe that's my own you know thing that i need to get into deeper but let me not get away straight away from the message but you realize that your life could be a blueprint for somebody else in the sense of you know you may be showing the next steps of what they need to do whether it's accepting themselves or really with their own life or career also, it offers insights to them for their own personal journey. And maybe that's what I just said. <laughs> but because you realize that, or like I said earlier, even though there won't be nobody like me ever again, it's always people that's similar to me. Whether it's their background, whether it's their mind, the way that they think, whether it's how they look, it's always going to people, it's always going to be people that, you know, uh, have the same type of, you know, background is me that can benefit from me doing my thing doing my thing the way that i want to do it and and that's always going to be you know recommended i think social media make people feel ungrateful for their own lives like we see people with the with the beautiful the, the nice things on and the flashy things and the and the you know the <laughs> The woman on their arm, or even just the reverse, you know, you know, like women with like the nicest things, and I bust that, and I think that makes us be ungrateful for what we have. And of course, I bust say, of course, it's a reality factor to that. Like I said, some people really just be dirt poor; they never had anything, and they start to become consumers, and they start to become very, you know, capitalistic and just greedy. And I bust say, and the thing about it is, it's like. Whatever path you go down, especially with anything materialistic, is like a losing path. Especially if you're not yourself, it's like you can you can get all that, and then you realize like I'm I'm still not whole. And a part of that embracing your story is that when you embrace your story, you become whole again. I, and I spoke about this in like an earlier video I had a long time ago. Is that when you become whole, like I said, it's nothing else you can do no more. It's nothing. It's nothing outside that can really satisfy you when you know. You learn to satisfy yourself and satisfy your heart, and satisfy your heart and your mind and just your being. Like I had to get that. I about to say, I'll be every now and then I fall into like these materialistic traps where I'm like, dog, like I, I don't. Let's say I may not have something right now, or I'm in this stuck position, and oh, and I'm upset that I'm not where I want to be at. But I gotta realize that you know, if I was there right now, I was probably more than likely I it'd be a it'd be an advanced emotion that I'm feeling, but it would all stem from the same thing. You're just feeling ungrateful or feeling inadequate. And if you never tame those emotions now, while you don't have it, when you have it, it's not going to be worthwhile anyway. So, yeah. So I would definitely say learn that racial story. Like I said, it's nobody that's ever going to exist like you ever again in your life. And I mean that, I'm about to say. And appreciate it. Like I said, it's just, you know, and appreciate that in other people as well. Always appreciate people's and not people's. <laughs> I'm, I'm sounding so ignorant. Appreciate other people in your life, especially the more genuine people in your life. You will not ever meet somebody like them ever again. And just to get spiritual for a little slight second, you got to realize that people that you meet just are, you know, unique as you are. They in your life a small amount of time. Love them, appreciate them, take them in for what they are. Learn lessons they may bring with you, well, with them, and you know, honor them. Never talk down on them because, to a certain extent, you know, 
I think that these other people, just as unique as you are, are an aspect of you. And they're merely a reflection of you and they're trying to show you something inside yourself. And that's why you really got to become a student of life and just get better at reading in between the lines and the fabrics of reality with people, situations, environments, anything, literally. That's how I live. So, yeah, if y'all like the video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later. Thank you.